Thank you, Lord. The, the first testimony we had tonight, the first testimony we had tonight, referred to a passage in the Bible that since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violence have taken it by force. So a woman confronted death who had swallowed a child. After five hours, and commanded death to vomit what it has swallowed. Tonight, I want you to shout a name. And after you have shout, shouted that name, you are going to command the devil that everything it has swallowed in your life must be vomited tonight. As you are to shout that name, because you can be sure when the woman was shouting, she wasn't shouting like a lady. She was shouting like a lioness. So you're going to forget your position, your influence, your wealth, unless there's nothing at all that the devil has taken away. But if you really, really mean business, because tonight is going to be different. You're going to shout that name and then you are going to command that everything the devil has swallowed from you must be vomited tonight. May I hear you shout the name of Jesus? Jesus. Then go ahead and command the devil, command the devil. Everything you have swallowed from me, you must vomit tonight. You must vomit tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything that you have already swallowed in my life, you vomit it tonight. You vomit it tonight. Ramoko sheke rendre moko runde kere makashato de. Must permit everything good in my life that you have swallowed. You must permit tonight. Everything that you have swallowed in my life. You permit it tonight. The name that's above every other name. Reteke Reba Kashanta. Everything good. Everything beautiful. That you, the devil, have swallowed in my life. For me tonight. Tonight. I command you, Satan, must permit everything good in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank 
Vete o loco. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And then one of the children who preached tonight said something about the Lord Jesus Christ being the door. And he said, He's the one who can guarantee your security. He said, Because if there's anything evil, that wants to attack you from outside, it will shut the door against it. We are living in a time of great uncertainties. But you are going to secure yourself tonight. You are going to shout a name, and you are going to shout it with anger. After you have shouted the name, you will command the devil never to come near your home again. Are you ready? Let me hear somebody shout the name of Jesus. Then go ahead, command Satan. You must not come near my house again. You must not come near my family again. Thank you, Daddy. Devil, you must not come near my house, must not come near my family, must not come near me at all. Forever. Command you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And when light comes in, darkness must go out. As for those of you who are here yesterday, that case is already settled for you. But we are to love our neighbor like ourselves. So we are going to give those who are coming just today the same opportunity. You're going to shout the name of Jesus. I shout it with vehemence and then command everything that is not of God in you, in your life, to get out. So open your mouth and shout the name of Jesus. And then command everything that's not of God to get out. Rambo Sheki Rimba Katanda Rambo Mama Kapiti Rende Rambo Kuru Rambo Sheki 
Jesus, 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 Jesus. Glory be to your holy name. All we're asking you to do tonight is just prove yourself. Show the world that you are the Almighty. Let everyone connected to this service, one way or the other, discover that your name is above every other name. At the end of it, take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And let somebody shout hallelujah. Father, I commit all your children into your hands. I'm asking Lord God Almighty that this particular month that you have dedicated to Jesus will be a life changing experience for them give them a new beginning a new beginning of joy of success of promotion of security of abundance of divine health bless them beyond measure and let them serve you like never before. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let me hear you shout another hallelujah. And if you are going to shout a good a name and shout it very well, that everything that went wrong at your source will be corrected tonight. Yeah. Do I hear you shout that name? Yeah. You must be ready to do some shouting tonight. Because with every shout, something mighty will happen in your life. Yeah. 
Now, now thank you very much. Do you know when you shout that name, what you are actually saying is that everything that has gone wrong in my body should get back to normal. And you will see, you will see before the sun rises tomorrow. I think it was in a way the last week. We're not we're not talking about something we don't know. I'm talking about something I know, something I have experienced, something that I know that I know that I know. We, I we, we had. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. I will tell you when to shout. We had the program light up. Uh, we wanted to light up Southeast. And so on the first night, I, wa I was there and I prayed for some people. And all of a sudden, 4.30 in the morning, my phone rang. I, I, I couldn't understand. I, I, up to now, I don't know how that fellow got my private number. I don't give it to people. Even my best friends don't know my private number. I only use it to call those I want to call. Because if it, I know if it is given to somebody else, it will be abused. But all of a sudden, it's 4.30 in the morning, I've been praying, thanking God, I was just falling asleep. My phone rang. And I, ah. When, if somebody is calling his pastor at 4.30, that fellow must have something important to, to discuss. So I picked up the phone, even though I could not recognize the number. And then I began to hear shouts at the other end. I began to hear shouts. Finally, when I could calm the, the fellow uh, down a little, okay, okay, okay. Um, what, what is it? Well, I thought she was shouting hallelujah because at, at least I picked the phone. She said, ah, Daddy, for months I've not been able to walk. Then yesterday, the light shone. I woke up this morning. She said, I woke up this morning and I'm dancing. Not just walking, I'm dancing. He said, I'm going to send you a video of my son. Then she, one way or the other, she got the video across and I saw the whole family dancing and rejoicing. I'm sharing that one because whether you believe it or not, somebody is going to be dancing before tomorrow morning. That's why in Matthew 15 verse 13, Matthew 15 verse 13, when he says, every plant my father has not planted shall be rooted up. That applies to mountains. Every mountain that crept in to your life. 
the Almighty God said, all you need to do is command that mountain and the mountain will go. Because Neymar wasn't born a leper. He was born a healthy fellow. So don't let anybody tell you that the sickness, the pain, the ache in your body is a gift from God. No. When he made you, you were made perfect. And so tonight, every form of imperfection in your life is going to go. Years ago, when I was turning 60, I went to visit somebody in, in one hospital in Ikeja. And in that hospital, there is uh, a little hospital by the side where they attend to people with eye problems. And my daughter was the one in charge. So, I ran to say hello to her. And she said, Daddy, you are about to be 60. Uh, come, I want to test your eyes because by now you, you need glasses. I said, If I need glasses, I will come to you. I said, You didn't do a test. Said, okay. And then she did all manners of tests, long distance, short distance. Finally, she brought something. Very tiny print. He said, definitely you can't read this. I looked at it, I said, how can anybody be asked to read this one? Whoever wrote this one, something must be wrong with the fellow. Then she said something. She said, you can read it when you were a child. The reason you can't read it now is because you are 60. I say, is that so? She said, yeah. I say, in that case, bring it. I will read. When God created you, he created you perfect. Don't settle for imperfection. I want to please with all anger. You are going to shout that name and then command every imperfection to get out of your system. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Somebody is going to testify before tomorrow morning. Every imperfection in your life, I don't care what the doctors may say. They may say it is because of old age, because of this or that. No, 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 no. The God who made you doesn't grow old. He doesn't lose his power. He made you perfect. In the name that's above every other name, you are going to return to perfection. Is the origin of mountains. In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7. The Bible tells us the story of a, a widow of one of the sons of the prophets. A family of God worshippers, people who have been serving God. 
God was there the day the man borrowed the first money. He was there. He knew how the money began to accumulate that he borrowed to the extent that by the time he died, there was such a heavy debt. That's why when the creditors came and they said they wanted to sell the children, and the woman had enough sense to run to the man of God, and say, ah, man of God, my husband served God till he died. Why must I lose my children because of death? Because God was at the beginning, he knew the origin of the death. That's why he miraculously uprooted that mountain of death. That's why miraculously he cleared it. Thank you, Father. Well, daddy asked me to tell somebody, he said, the fellow will understand. He said, I will help you pay your debt. He said, but never borrow again. That's why when the woman was faced with a mountain of debt, God created a miracle. God made sure there was something left in the house that he would use to uproot that mountain of death. Well, God had already spoken. I was going to pray that God will clear your death, but he had already promised. And I can guarantee you, as my God lives, those of you who are heavily in debt now, before the annual convention, you will come and see me. With mighty, mighty testimonies of surplus. Now, oh, <laughs> you will have to excuse me I have to write this one down need to write this down yourself. Take your pen. Take your pen. Oh Lord, thank you Jesus. The Lord says the Lord says there are seven prophecies in a row. You can pick your own as we go along. And they are all based on Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 11. Acts, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 11. And he said, number one,
for someone here tonight your rising has begun Number two, he said, your progress has started. Mm. And I like number three. He said, the hand of God will reach out to you. Number four. He said, The strength of the Almighty will pour into you. Yeah. Number five. He said, Your joy will be visible to all. Number six, he said, an uncommon promotion will come your way. <laughs> Number seven. He said, you will have something to praise God for, for a long time. Now, he asked me to say this. I don't know who that fellow may be, whether here or anywhere else, who is saying, I don't believe. Don't believe this kind of joking. Ask me to tell you, whoever you are, who cares? Who is going to be the loser? Ask me to tell that unbelieving fellow, you will see the testimonies. He is the origin of anything that can happen to you. That's why he can uproot every mountain, particularly the mountain of sorrow. In John chapter 11, from verse 1 to 44, John 11, from verse 1 to 44, the Bible tells us that when Lazarus was sick, they sent to Jesus Christ. And he told the disciples, I know he's going to die. And I'm happy for your sake that I was not there when he died. What does that mean? But he said, let's go and wake him up. He knew the origin of everything causing you sorrow. When Jesus wept at the burial ground, at the grave of Lazarus, he wasn't weeping because Lazarus died. He was weeping because the, 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 those who are very close to him didn't even believe when he said, don't worry, your brother will rise again. It was sad. Because the people around him were unbelievers. He knew he was going to bring this man back to life. 
have good news for somebody here today if you can shout a name Everything that is causing you sorrow shall disappear very soon. Is there anybody here today who has made a very terrible mistake? So you, are, you, you are not even sure whether Jesus will ever make use of you again. Uh. I have good news for you. He will restore you. Hmm. Let, let, let me hurry a bit because we will. We'll we want to pray tonight, and I will tell you why we should pray. He knows the origin of every storm. Every storm. Because when we talk about a storm, physically, a storm is a combination First of all, he asked me to tell somebody, he said, you have been forgiven. He said, go and sin no more. Then he asked me to tell somebody, he said, there's a principality in your family, and you all know him. That is the one pressing down the family. They asked me to tell you that the next time you shout his name, that principality will fall. Amen. Amen. Mark 4, 20, 35 to 41. When there was a storm and daddy was sleeping, the moment they woke him up, he just spoke a word and said, Peace be still. And all of a sudden, the storm was over. And the people said, Oh, what manner of man is this that the wind and the sea obey him? Every one of you passing through a storm, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. origin he knows what is going on oh it is witches fighting against me who made the witches who made them he, he said I made wasters to destroy that's what he said in Isaiah 54 that's why he said there's no weapon fashioned against you that will prosper. He said, I'm the one who made those people who had roots to have, to say they put a charm on you. I made those things. All I need to, to do is to tell those who, 
your uh, charms or whatever, go to sleep. Ah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Lord said there's someone listening to me now. He said, one day very soon, when they ask you, what do you need? You will tell them, I have more than I need. And he said, whoever this one is will understand. I must know that this is from God and God alone. He said, the cloud will roll away. He knows the origin of your destiny. That's the most important of all these things. Because before you were born, he had already said to he had a blueprint for your life. He had a blueprint for your life. And nobody, nobody but him and him alone can alter your destiny. Whatever he says you are going to become, you will become. He has settled that before the foundations of the world. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11, Revelation 4 verse 11 says, He created all things for his pleasure. He made you so that he will be pleased with your creation. Everything about you is already settled. Not, not, not a question of going to be. It's already settled. When I was in what they call the, I think what they will call it nowadays is nursery. Where we will go to school with a plate on our head. The plate is, uh, <laughs> those, <laughs> the older ones will know what I'm talking about. A piece of wood, big thing, painted black. And they give you chalk, you go to school, were well, very little, and you may spend the whole day learning how to write letter A. So by the time you are coming home, your face is full of chalk. An old man met me coming from school and looked at me and said, Huh, senior academician. Look at somebody who is spending a whole day learning how to write letter A. But the old man saw somebody who get a PhD in mathematics. Not long after that one, another old man saw me. He said, huh, Baba Eko. At that time, I didn't even know there's a place called Eko. I've never been to the nearest town to my village. But somehow they saw a bit into the future. Let me tell you the truth. Everything you are going to become is already settled. Luke 5 from verse 1 to 11. After Peter fished all night and caught nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, 
It's a very serious one. He said somebody dreamt and your roof is leaking. Now he, he said uh, the enemy came from above and they penetrated. But he asked me to tell you when you shout the next Jesus. He said, how they came in is how they will go out. The goal that my Father in heaven has set for you, you will reach that goal. Let all the witches and wizards in Nigeria send for all the witches and wizards in every other part of the world. They can't stop you. Because when God is for us, who can be against us? Let me hear somebody shout hallelujah. I don't want to spend tonight telling you stories. Some of you have had several stories about the power in the name of Jesus. Just the name. May I just tell you one and then we'll pray. I just remind those of us who have had it before. I was this young boy, well, a very young boy. God born again. Happens to be the son of the chief herbalist in the town. And then, with the zeal of a child, without consulting the parents, every idol, every charm in the house, he gathered them together and burnt them. And the mother was very, very displeased and went to the, to the meeting of the court, told them what the son had done. He said, I, I can't kill him myself because she came out, he came out of my womb. They helped me kill him. And they said, no problem. So mama was there in the meeting. And the boy was at home. Doors locked, windows locked. And all of a sudden, a huge dog covered in charms went right through the door. The door was locked. But the door went right through the door without opening it. I was coming straight to this young man. Fortunately, he was on his knees when he came in. There was no time to say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. But there was enough time to shout a name And when he shouted Jesus, something like a thunderbolt came down from heaven, hit the dog, and the dog died on the spot.
Now you tried. But if you are the one alone in the house, the all doors locked, and then you lift up your eyes, and you suddenly see a huge dog covered in all manners of charms coming towards you. The way you will shout Jesus will be different. going to be praying some very tough prayers tonight. It's easy to ask demons to get out, and they will. Particularly if there are people around into which or into whom they can enter. So if you don't belong to Jesus Christ, if you are just mixing with us because you enjoy the singing and the dancing. When we begin to call the name tonight, you might be in danger. Unless you come and surrender to Jesus and become one of his, things might get a bit rough tonight for forces of darkness. And you don't want to... <laughs> You don't want to go home loaded with demons. Let me tell you the truth. Demons know those who belong to Jesus. And they don't want to mess with them. In case you don't believe me, something happened not too long ago. I was in Abuja and I went to preach. And after I finished preaching, I made the altar call. And those who came forward, they were not too many. So I, I just decided I will humor them, um, shake hands with each and every one of them. And, I, and they were all happy. People were, and some people wish they were, they, they were born again, again. So they can get a handshake. And I was shaking hands with everybody. Then it became the turn of one particular lady. She refused. They pushed her, she said, no, I don't want his hand to touch my hand. Fire is going to fall here tonight. And I mean fire is going to fall here tonight. If you know that you know that you do not belong to Jesus Christ, but you would rather belong to him now. I'm going to count from one to ten. Before I say ten, come and stand before the altar. We will pray for your salvation. And things will change from tonight onward. So if you want to come, come very quickly. As I'm counting now, one, cry to the almighty God. He said, Lord Jesus Christ, please have mercy on me. Save my soul tonight. Save my soul tonight. I want to belong to you. 100% I want to do your will. Just save my soul and I will serve you. So thank you, my Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Savior, I want to bless your holy name. I want to thank you because your name is Jesus because you will save your people from their sins. Thank you for these people who have come forward tonight to surrender their life to you. Father, please receive them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Save their souls tonight, Lord, and write their names in the book of life. Please receive them into the family of God. And from now on, when they cry unto you, please answer them by fire. And don't let them ever, ever go back to the world. Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.
that the Almighty God has given you the special grace to be here tonight. Because every, everything evil that followed you here tonight will not go back home with you. So you praise him. Number two, we're going to ask Jesus to go back to your source where you originated from and clean up everything there. Go to my source, to my very, very beginning. Clean up everything there. After all, it is written, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passing, where all things have become new. Please go to my source. Go to my very origin. Clean up everything there. And then number three. Any form of imperfection that may still be in my body. Body, soul, spirit. Any form of imperfection. You are a miracle walking God. I want you to take it away tonight. Because when he healed Naaman, the Bible said the skin became like that of a newborn baby. Lord, I want to become like a newborn baby physically. I want every imperfection in my body to go tonight. And then number four. We say, Father, you know the source of every mountain in my way. In your name, I'm commanding every mountain to move tonight. None of these mountains will see the light of day tomorrow. Then number five, every storm in my life, small or big, or any storm that the enemy is planning for me, stop it even before it can start. Steal every storm. Number six. That goal that you planned for me, even before I was born, take me there speedily. Speedily. That every obstruction becomes stepping stone to reach him, I go speedily. And then number seven. I say, my future is in your hand, O oh Lord. Let it be well. Just let it be well. Number eight will be any other thing you want to talk to God about. The altar is open. And uh, we can have about 
15 to 20 minutes to cry to the Almighty God. Let's go ahead and start by praising Him. Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Almighty God will go to your source today. If there's anything there at all, that could be bringing curses upon you and your children, the blood of Jesus will wipe it out. Anything in your body, inside out, that wasn't there when God made you. 
we disappear now. Your body will become as strong as that of a newborn baby. Every imperfection will disappear right now. Every mountain that the enemy has erected to block your way shall go now in Jesus' name. Every storm physical, mental, marital, spiritual, we be stilled right now. Anybody's trying to block your way to your goal. In God's own miraculous way, we help you to reach that goal. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every opposition to your success shall bow right now. Because it is written, Christ in you, the hope of glory, your future shall be glorious. And any evil force hibernating anywhere near you, every agent of the devil, I decree right now that they be ejected. Any enemy pretending to be a friend I decree right now that they be exposed. It shall be well with you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. Very soon somebody will be singing Wonder Wonder. <laughs> my Father, my God, we thank you for another great night. Thank you for the Holy Ghost service. Thank you for this program that has been on since 1986 and is still waxing stronger by the day. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask that tonight to accept the thanksgiving of your children. You will bless it and use it for your glory. Father, in your name I decree concerning everyone who had given you cheerfully this night, Everything called financial crisis will never happen in your life again. Any attempt by the enemy to interfere with your finances, I cancel it right now in Jesus' name. In the name of the one who called me and sent me. Those of you who came by buses, 
very soon you will be riding your own cars. And those of you who came by cars, very soon, you will not come alone. But you will buy luxurious buses to bring people to the Holy Ghost service. And very soon, to avoid traffic jam, many of you will be flying in. In that name that's above every other name, very soon you will have more than sufficient. Go in peace. The Almighty God will go with you. Every roadblock of the enemy has been dismantled. You will reach home in peace. Before Sunday, you will have multiple testimonies. It shall be well with you. And you will serve God the more. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, one thing I think you will do is that you will shout the biggest Jesus you have ever shouted before. Shout Jesus. You are so good Jesus You are so good What no man can do You have done for me What no man can do You have done for me What no man can do You have done for me What no man can do You have done for me Jesus, you are so You've done well, the Papa. Jesus, you are so good. What, what no man, man can, can do, you have done for me. What, what no man, man can do, you have done for me. What no man can do, you have done for me. What no man can do. Yeah.
Christ. Wonder, 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 wonder. Hey, I've never seen this kind of before. 